Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Wang, the host of Making Sense of Science channel. When standard care treatment failed to control the growth of cancer, experimental therapies offered through clinical trials might provide a chance to stop the cancer progression or even eliminate the cancer. This video shows you a real case of a successful life-saving clinical trial that saved the life of a patient with late-stage cancer. Dr. Steven Rosenberg, Chief of Surgery at NCI, is the principal investigator of the clinical trial. Let's hear from him about the trial of tail therapy. So the last patient that I'll mention, and you're going to meet uh, Melinda Bikini here, was a young woman who had a liver cancer called a cholangial carcinoma, cancer that started in the bile ducts of the, uh, of the liver. She'd had half of her liver removed surgically. This is a fairly typical uh, case of how people progress when they uh, have a uh, cancer as virulent as this. She developed multiple lung and liver metastases. She received chemotherapy but progressed through it. More chemotherapy progressed through it, which is the, the fairly uh, usual course. We then gave her a kind of cell called a tumor infiltrating lymphocyte that we could grow out of her body uh, that could be very effective, could cure 30% of patients with melanoma. And Melinda was actually the first patient to receive a new treatment that we developed. And so we began work to see if we couldn't actually target the very products of these mutations that caused the cancer. It's ironic in a sense that the very mutations that caused the cancer I think are going to turn out to be the Achilles heel of this cancer when it comes to immunotherapy. And Melinda was the first patient to receive her own cells that targeted one of the 26 mutations that she had in, our, uh, in her cancer. Uh, and uh, when we treated her, she had an x-ray that looked like this. You could see the top three panels show these large uh, lung metastases that were growing. She had three metastases in her liver. You can see one of them in the, uh, in the lower panel. We treated Melinda uh, with T-cells, her own T-cells, that could recognize the mutations in her own cancer. And all of her cancer has disappeared. There's one scar left of that the lesion in the left lung. Uh, that probably a scar and not tumor at all, and I do believe that she is uh, disease-free. It's a treatment now that we're trying to apply to multiple patients with cancer, and we've seen now isolated patients with breast cancer, cervical cancer, colon cancer, that have had regressions by targeting the very mutations in their, uh, in their cancer, and that's the work that we're trying to uh, pursue, uh, pursue now. A happy reunion between Dr. Rosenberg and Melinda Bikini. Let's hear her story now. Thank you. So with that, let me ask uh, Melinda Bikini, one of uh, the critical patients who was courageous enough to, to volunteer to receive a new treatment that no one had ever uh, received uh, before. And I, uh, we've become good friends. Melinda has become a major advocate for cancer research at almost all of the cancer meetings around the country. And so it's a pleasure to introduce her to you. Hello everyone and thank you for having me. I appreciate being here and getting the opportunity to tell a little bit um, about my story. Um, so nine years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four cholangiocarcinoma. Um, I'd never heard of it before, but I quickly found out there was no proven treatment. Um, I'm a wife, a mother of six, and I wasn't okay with that, <laughs> with that option. So right away I went looking for a clinical trial, or I had my oncologist look for a clinical trial after the tumors came back after my first uh, liver resection. And it was at that time that I was labeled a stage four terminal cancer patient. And um, anyway, I knew if I was gonna find something, I had to find something new because what was out there wasn't going to cure me and that wasn't good enough. And um, like Dr. Rosenberg showed, the disease started to progress. And after about 18 months of doing chemotherapy, I had a horrible quality of life. Um, I wasn't able to get out of bed. Um, and it was at that point that I really chose um, quality over quantity and decided to not do chemo anymore. And I happened to be, I think, paying a medical bill online 
when I stumbled across the clinical trial out at NIH for uh, Dr. Rosenberg's treatment, and I read it, and I took it to my husband, and I said, this is what I want to do. And I remember going out to NIH and having the fellow explain it to my husband and I, and I, she ended a couple sentences with, and you could die. But then I remember Dr. Goff came in and explained it, and, and it was really at that point that I knew I had absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain, and it wouldn't have mattered because I really didn't have anything to lose. And so we went through it. Seven years ago, April 2012, was the first time I received the first set of T cells, 42.6 billion. And it was immediately after that treatment, I went home and um, my quality of life improved so drastically, it was unbelievable. And then slowly the cells, or the tumors started growing again over that 18 month time frame when they discovered the mutation reactive T cell. And I went back for my second treatment in October of 2013. And while the treatment isn't um, easy, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Doing it twice was good, and, but I would. I would absolutely do it again in a heartbeat because the results were so good. Um, a month in the hospital, but coming home every day, I felt an improvement. And it was literally a month after my second um, T cell infusion of 100 and, almost 127 billion cells, I believe, that we were actually downhill skiing. I mean, it worked that fast for me and things were that good. Um, I'm a, from a, a, you know, a, a rural state in Montana where there weren't a lot of options for me. So to be able to travel back and forth from Montana to Bethesda for seven years has been incredible. I would not have been able to do that. So um, it's because of uh, funding and uh, the work that the National Foundation for Cancer Research does that you know patients like me have these opportunities. So I'm so very appreciative. Um, so I do, that's where I'm at right now. It's been nine years since that diagnosis. And I remember at the time, you know, just begging God for five years to get my kids a little older. And um, actually, four months ago, I became a grandma for the first time, so I've reached you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. To learn more about cancer research and new therapy clinical trials, subscribe to this channel now, so you won't miss the next video. I'm Dr. Michael Wang. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.